Hey, hello and welcome everybody today uh, for our exciting journey for mastering RMM. So we're going to continue today uh, with our loading and monitoring section. So last week we talked about uh, the agent deployment and what the agent does when it's ready. So we are going to continue today with our alerting and monitoring and intelligent alerts are great stuff to cover up today. All right, so let's get started. So let's quickly unpack what's an intelligent alert. So uh, from a navigation standpoint, you can see it's available on the left navigation menu under alert management for intelligent alerts. Now, all the intelligent alerts are pre-baked or out of the box monitoring uh, conditions that uh, ConnectWise has written it down for you. Uh, and uh, for enabling them, you practically don't need to do anything. So I call it as auto magic. So the magic happens as soon as you deploy the agent, the agent starts scanning, the entire asset, the asset figures out you know, what kind of application, what kind of hardware configuration is present. And based on that, the whole uh, suite of alerting rules gets applied on the endpoint. Now, if you look at uh, the intelligent alerts, we have varied monitoring conditions based on the RMM subscription that you have. And uh, they would be like kind of ready to get applied and it'll start alerting and shooting uh, you know, tickets uh, if there are any problems. And I'll walk you through that whole process here. But in general, uh, these alert conditions are just to notify that there is a problem on your endpoint that is being monitored. Uh, you can write automation on top of it uh, in case if you want to you know, uh, fix something or you know that this problem comes in and this is uh, the kind of tasking function that I could run on the endpoint. Uh, and it does a full circle or in, the, in terms of a full loop, as soon as uh, some automation or the issue is being resolved, uh, it it should be able to resolve and update the ticket uh, as well. And a uh, few of the monitoring conditions can also be customized in, in the sense of changing certain thresholds and applying it to specific endpoints instead of applying it to all. Uh, the intelligent alerts by default is kind of global in nature. The other thing comes in because we, with great powers, give, comes great responsibilities. With all the monitoring conditions that we offer out of the box, there are suspension rules uh, with that as well. Now, in short, suspension is anything that you don't want the system to fire up the alert or uh, you know, ignore that state of condition for a limited period of time, recursively, or just permanently stop that. So uh, the suspension is basically the controlling mechanism that you can utilize uh, to decide and define. So I'll give a quick example there. Uh, if you have some sort of uh, maintenance going on on the servers, and for that duration, if you just want to completely stop any kind of alerting functions, you could always come and suspend them uh, to, uh, to, to be not disturbed at the time when uh, these uh, suspension or maintenance is going on over here. As soon as the period is over, uh, the system resumes the monitoring uh, for all good reasons to start generating alerts and tickets. And you could do this with monitors as well. So in our previous sessions, we did cover up the monitors part. So this is applicable to both the uh, state of alerts. Now, I'll just try to unpack a little bit with suspension. So uh, for creating a suspension, there is the, the suspension menu available on the left-hand side. And uh, on the right-hand side, there is the add rule button. And clicking on the add rule gives you option, like what kind of alerts you want to stop. Uh, and it's highly customizable. You can only say, I want to stop all monitors, or I want to stop all the intelligent alerts. And when you get into uh, the intelligent alerts, uh, there are sections, and I'm going to split them up into uh, stages. So stage one, or part of it, is the metadata. It's in what is the name of the suspension rule. Uh, if you want to add any description, why you're uh, putting it to suspension and things, you could cover it over here. Second is the target resource. Because you could, say, do it across the entire site, do it for a specific machine, do it for uh, a group of sites, companies, or do it for every uh, endpoint that is available in the system. That might be handy when you're doing some sort of onboarding or uh, doing some sort of deployments of softwares and stuff like that. Next part is our schedules. Now, schedules uh, are, uh, again, as mentioned, you could start it with a time box it from a particular time to a particular time. You might say from now till never. Uh, those uh, would be permanently suspended, or if you want to do it recursively, like uh, every Saturday there is a maintenance, the server gets restarted, 
you don't want to get a, a device down monitoring alert at that point in time. Uh, you could just create a recursive suspension. And it's pretty, pretty much similar to an Outlook rule, how you're doing it. You want to do it every day, every week, for a specific day uh, and time. And last is the target. Uh, you also need to define like what you want to suspend. Uh, you want a specific alert. You want to do it for a monitor. You want it for a specific type. Or you want to do it for a whole family of things. Uh, an example would be uh, migrated to Office 365. If there is exchange on the machine. You don't want. You don't care about what happens with that. So in that case, you could just use the family for doing suspension for that. Now, here are some educational documentation that uh, can be really handy here. But we'll just quickly jump into a, a quick live session uh, to cover uh, the intelligent alerts and suspension. So I'm here on my instance. Uh, if you open the left now, alert management here, and in the alert management, uh, there is the intelligent alert. Now here, uh, as soon as the screen loads, you will see all the uh, monitoring conditions that are applied uh, at this uh, uh, instance. Basically, this applies to all the endpoints at this site here. Uh, you can always highlight a row on the right hand side. You will see a little more detail in terms of the description, the family, the criticality and things like that. You could always click on any specific monitoring condition here and you get this little button which says add automation uh, and you can always write any automation associated with that. So every time this a particular alerting condition will fire a ticket, uh, the automation will run against that. Now, these are, again, as I said, these are more of pre-baked uh, system, uh, but we do provide certain conditions that can be customizable. And I'll say, uh, show me all the conditions that can be customized. Uh, let's pick this one, system performance is low due to paging. Uh, in, in, in this case here, if you see, there is a default threshold. That means we are declaring what is the criteria when we are gonna be generating an alert. But in case you have a specific machine, a site that should have a different threshold altogether, you might say uh, alpha state, uh, that might be the, the, the company or site. Uh, you can define what target it applies to. And in SRAP 50, I would like to make it 80 <clears throat> and I can run a specific automation as well. So what happens here is this particular target or the threshold definition is different and it'll apply to those target endpoints. But for all the other endpoints, you'll have a default that gets uh, applied on the system. So this is how you get the alerts and tickets. Uh, but for all the other conditions, you can see a full list of uh, conditions here. Uh, this list keeps drawing, as we, as we say, because uh, if you are enabling Acronis you, and if you have the Acronis integration available, you will get these Acronis alerts. Uh, but if you have other uh, state of uh, integrations and if they offer monitoring conditions, you might get those as well over here. Now, all the alerts, uh, if you want to go for creating suspension, you could do it from here by selecting these uh, conditions and click on the button that says suspension rule. In this case, the system will pre-select the conditions uh, for suspension. If not, we can just start the regular way. You go to suspension, uh, you'll get the default uh, listing of all the existing suspensions that you have in the system. And once you have those listing, you could either click on any one of those to edit or modify something, or you can click on the button here, it says add rule. And clicking on add rule, uh, I'll try doing for intelligent alerts. And when you click on the intelligent alert, it has these sections, which I uh, shown you earlier in the presentation. So the name I can say, Test demo just for testing. It's my description part. Uh, target, uh, you can click on the select target. It basically opens up the resource selector for all your companies that are available. You can do it by company, you can do it by site, you could use device groups, you could use specific devices, or you might say, just do it for all the endpoints that I have, which means anything and everything uh, in monitoring will be suspended for that. Now, uh, the next part is the schedule. Uh, you can just say uh, a specific time zone. It prompts you for the start date. Uh, I might say 29th. Um, I can pick the time here. Let's say 1 a.m. Or if I want to just start right away, I will say now. 
and I'll end it never, or I can just define whatever duration I'm gonna end it. You could also do recurrence here, uh, repeat every day, every week, every month on the specific dates. You get the entire calendar here. So you could just basically pick and choose when you don't want alerting conditions to fire up. And last is the suspended conditions here. So you can see, you can go by condition by condition. I want to suspend this, that one, whatever. Or you could just say a group of uh, conditions. And here, if you see, uh, based on each family, we show you the count of alerts. So if I say, example, exchange, then all 136 monitoring conditions or alerts would be included uh, from now till never. And I'm going to say, uh, I want to pick the Alpha AI as the company. At Alpha AI, uh, between this time, I don't want any monitoring conditions that belong to the exchange family. I'm going to do the suspension. Uh, I hit the Save button, and this creates a suspension rule. Now, suspension rules get effective in their real time. Uh, roughly less than 10 seconds or something, it gets effectively applied, and any new uh, tickets which are going to get generated, any tickets which are supposed to get updated, would be excluded uh, from the whole process of uh, generation cycles here. Now, you could see the same details at the endpoint level as well. So if you go to devices and computers, it basically lists down all the monitoring uh, or all the endpoints that are being monitored. Uh, and you could click on or, or basically choose any one of those right here. So let's, let's pick this particular endpoint. And when you pick that particular endpoint, there is the monitoring uh, tab available. And you can see uh, the intelligent alerts here. You will see all the ones that are applied to this specific endpoint. So though I had, what, 1,100 plus monitoring conditions displayed here, here the system is trying to narrow down and show what is actually getting applied to this target endpoint. And once uh, the listing is available here, the same functions apply. You could just highlight any row uh, to see the details. Uh, and you could also go to suspension, which basically shows that if there is anything that is not going to generate an alert. So this could be a good starting point to see if uh, there are certain things that you uh, are not getting tickets for, if accidentally or you created some suspension uh, that's stopping those things out here. So this covers all what we have for the intelligent alerts. And uh, again, I'll bring up the slide here. Uh, these are the documentation links that you can always refer to. Uh, and uh, we'll cover more things here uh, in our uh, upcoming session. So do join us tomorrow to continue discussion around these intelligent alerts and suspensions to talk further. Thank you.